Hi, I'm Mark Verstegen with the Sports School Training Center. Today we're going to focus on recovery and regeneration, the ability to let your body rest. We're going to optimize recovery today with using the foam roll for some great self-massage as well as getting into some flexibility. We'll follow that up with a little bit of flushing ESD and you're going to feel great and ready to go on the upcoming episodes. This workout can really be focused for Wednesdays, Saturdays, or Sundays, or if you ever feel like you just need a break. You ready to get going? I think so. Excellent. We're gonna start off with our first section of really going through more of a movement prep. Craig's gonna go right into a hip crossover. Our goal here, increase core temperature. Elongate the muscle actively, not stress you out too much. And that's what we're gonna do today. We'll also get a little bit of incorporation of balance. Craig's gonna go down, arms straight. Belly button's pulled right in, we know that now. Pull those knees right over. And you're just gonna feel a nice stretch coming right into the back and then go right to the other side. We're gonna do eight repetitions each. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a progression to go. You ready? Mm -hmm. Good, over and back is one. Now this is just nice and easy. Notice Craig is leaving his feet right down on the ground. Today's a little bit more of a chill day. Good, Craig, let's go ahead for these last five reps and just take your knees up. Let's go ahead and tuck your knees up, you guys, right there, toes right up toward your shins, and just rock it over a little bit more. Hopefully this shouldn't be too hard. Just gonna help stretch more in the middle of your back in through here, really get everything rotating and moving. I definitely feel a little higher up in my back. Up and through here? Good. That is the goal. I'm really trying to keep my opposite shoulder pinned down to the ground also. Sometimes you'll see people where their shoulder will come off the ground and I wanna keep that just locked right in there. Good. And last one, over back and rest. Great job. Now that's the hip crossover. Next we want to start to focus on the calf stretch. We've been moving around quite a bit. Want to make sure that your ankle joint is really starting to work. So what Craig's going to do is he's going to roll right over. He's going to go into stretching this area right through here. By taking this leg, leaving it straight, pulling his, putting his toe right over the opposite foot, he's going to activate the muscles or fire the muscles of the front of his shin. He does that by attempting to pull his toe right up toward his shin, which will force the opposite muscle here to relax and to stretch. He's then gonna push away all the way up onto his big toe, which will contract to this range of motion. Now pull up with the front of your shin, and now push away. This is gonna help pull up, stretch the muscle out, lengthen it, pushing through it, strengthens it. Great concept at sports school. Lengthen it, now strengthen it. We're gonna do that for a total of eight reps all the way up and all the way down, and that's one. Good, and two, three, good. And once you get your mind and your muscle, today's a relaxation day. Pull that toe right up toward your shin, push away. The thing about regeneration recovery workouts is reloading, reloading your body so you can do better work sooner. Good, Craig. You wanna make sure you can adapt from this. It's a great job. And now I'll go ahead and we'll get the other calf and we'll do that for eight reps. Craig will stack up. Now he's gonna pull the toe right up toward his shin and then push away and then pull up and push away. Craig, now what are you really concentrate on doing here? I'm thinking about just feeling a nice, easy stretch through my uh, calf and Achilles. Keep my knee straight on this one and then just contracting right back through. Also, through my upper body, I'm really trying to stay strong through my shoulder blades as well. That's a great point. Craig's really trying to make sure that he pulls that belly button right into his spine. Shoulders are pushed away. Kind of goes back to that same concept of always having great pillar strength. And rest, grade eight reps. Okay, now that we've got that in, I want to start to go through. Now, take that loosened up upper body, mm -hmm. loosened up calves, let's start to put it together. It's gonna to give you a little bit of strength, a little bit of shoulder stability, a little core stability, lengthen out those hamstrings, which are gonna be tight from the last couple days. So Craig, we're gonna go through hand walks. Okay. When we go through hand walks, Craig is gonna put his hands right down on the floor. And remember as those hands hit, I wanna make sure that we push out of your shoulders, keeping your chest as far away from the ground as possible. Now we're gonna keep the belly button pulled right into the spine. And as we have that, you'll get a little bit of development of your core, your shoulders. Now let's stretch out the hamstrings here. Okay? We're gonna take the ankles, only working right here at the ankle, 
So if the legs are staying straight, notice the nice small steps Craig's taking. The legs remain straight. Now notice the fingertips, and then he can go a little further. Good. We'll take one more rep out here. We're gonna do this for four repetitions total. Craig's gonna walk it up. Craig, we're gonna count this as a rep. You need to put it on pause to catch up. Go ahead and rest. Let's go ahead and face the other way. We have three more left. Okay, shoulders pushed away. Really staying real skinny here. Does a nice job. Legs are staying straight. The hips come taller. He goes right up on his fingertips and then he's gonna walk right back out. Good. Nice and long. Belly button's in. That's it. Good, Craig. All the way up on his fingertips. And the last one coming up right here. Good, tummy's tight. We don't wanna do too many to make you tired, but we do wanna turn these muscles on just like a dog or a cat waking up from a nap. Get it all lengthened out so you can have a great day. Nice job. Thanks. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, Craig, I'm just gonna have you do this one in place. We're gonna do our forward lunge forearm to end step, much like our super seven movement prep. We're just gonna take a nice step out. And as we do that, we'll support the weight with the hand right here, the knees behind the toes, Craig's back knee is right off the ground. He's gonna reach that elbow right to his instep. That's gonna stretch the muscles out of the inside of the thigh, up to the glutes and low back. He's getting a great stretch right through here by contracting the glute or pushing it into the ground. He's leaving his hand here and he's gonna push tall right into this hamstring stretch. You're gonna feel a nice stretch to the top of the back side of your leg, or the hamstring. Then we're gonna drop back down and just drop this elbow right back in. So we'll just go right to the next rep. We're gonna do this for four reps on each side. Okay, this is our first. Good. Big reach, exhale. Big push tall. And the more I can keep that glute in my back leg tight, I feel that hip flexor just open up and release. And I take my elbow down. That's it. Excellent push tall to get the hamstring. And the last repetition is coming up, you guys. Big reach and then we'll rest. Go ahead and push tall. And great job, Craig. Go ahead and take a rest. Thanks. Now, if you need to use the video on demand technology, hit pause, catch your breath, but we still have the other leg to go. No okay. pause button for you, yeah? Okay. All right, let's step out. Good. Put the right leg forward. Put this left hand down, support a lot of weight. Let's reach. And here we go. It's the first rep. Big reach. Big push tall. Now notice the nice stretch is getting right up through here, trying to create a straight line out of those stripes. Good, down. That's the way. That's two great reps, Craig. Definitely a little tighter on this side today. Up in this left hip or in the right hip? A little bit of both. He's always honest with us, I love that. Left Good. hip flexor, right, uh, right glute and hamstring. Good. And you're gonna find that in your own body as well. Last one right here, big reach. Exhale, drive the hip in the ground. Come up, holding these stretches for about a count and a half each time. Well done, Craig. Thanks. Feel pretty good? Yeah, again, tight on the first one or two, and then by the end of it, getting back to normal. Now let's go ahead and try to stretch out the muscles on the front side, again, with our backward lunge okay. twist. You ready? Yep, there Perfect. you go. We're just gonna go ahead and do this one staying in place. So Craig, I'm gonna have you come right out here. Let's go ahead and just take one nice backward lunge. Let's go ahead and step back. Okay, catch your balance. Hold good posture, drop your front leg down. Still wanna see some space under this knee right here. Craig's gonna turn into his front leg, slight arch of the back here. He's reaching along with this right leg, and now fire the hip by pushing it forward, releasing the muscles up across the body. Okay, then we'll push back up. Good. Ooh. And we'll do the same thing off the other side. The arch in the back, the long reach, the big stretch, the fire of the glute, and rest. Okay, you ready to count this for work? Yeah. Good. You know what I finally found out? I think Craig sometimes thinks I miscount. He just has to do a few extra demonstration reps, which I think he calculates in his head. Doesn't affect us so much. You ready to go? I am. All right, we're gonna go for four reps each side. Let's go ahead and step back, catch your balance. Lock in your posture, arch your back slightly, fire this glute forward, and let's step back up. Repeat with the other leg, drop in, big reach. Notice that nice stretch you can see right through Craig's clothes. It's the same thing that's happened to your muscles, to your fascia. And that fascia, I mean, it's all the things that hold your muscles in place. It goes from the top of your head, down to your toes, and it helps give the stability in the joints. Keeping that back glute contracted 
basically just means if you want to take this other thumb and kind of poke on it and make sure it's tight, you know that you've got that thing turned on and you'll feel a bit more of an intense stretch in that hip flexor. And that'll mean that we can get a little bit deeper into that stretch. Good. That's the way. Big reach. How many do we have left there, Craig? One more on each side? Maybe. I think we think we don't know how to count. Good big reach. Now listen, if this is too many or too few, you are in control. Use your pause button, go into the number of reps that you need. You may need more, you may need less. This is still adaptable, you're always in control. And that's a great thing about the video on demand. Our next stretch is the lateral lunge. We're gonna do it in place as well. And we're gonna go through, it will stretch out all the muscles of your hip capsule, as well as stretching out all the muscles of the inside part of your leg. So Craig's gonna go through, and we're gonna go one demonstration rep, we'll reset, and then we're gonna go into four reps each side. So let's go okay. ahead and show one great rep. Now remember the key points here, Craig wants to have great posture. He has his toes straight ahead and both feet are flat. Very important. Everything else comes in there. The last key point is that this leg stays real straight so he feels that stretch right to the inside part of his leg. Craig, that's plenty of demos. So he's gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now let's go ahead, let's start the first rep. Drop into it, good. Exhale, drop the hips deep, slide over the other side. Let's hold it for about two counts, good. Drop over, hold that posture. Now chest up, arch that low back, you'll deepen the stretch. Make sure the leg is straight. Good. Two more. Reach. A little deeper, you guys. Exhale. Get your mind and your muscle. Good. And bring it over the other way. Get your mind and your muscle. That's the way. Sit back and down. Exhale. Drop back over. And exhale. And rest. Great job. Thanks. The key points that we have for sumo squats to stand is Craig is going to take his feet just outside his hips. He's then going to bend over at the waist getting his hands down to his toes. I wanna to make sure that you can grab just on the inside. Craig's gonna keep his elbows inside his knees. He's now gonna pull his hips right down between his feet. Now his chest is gonna be up. Now Craig has really great posture here. He's got a great stretch in here. It's a good stretch in through his ankles. If you feel like you're gonna fall over backwards, try to get your weight shift a little bit more forward. Then he's gonna to try to pull his chest up and almost pull his hips forward so he tries to get real vertical little stretch, then he's gonna keep his back straight and lift his hips all the way up, trying to create a straight line right here with his legs. Good, okay, here we go, get in your position. Feet outside your hips, grab your toes. Pull your chest up, your hips forward. Good deep stretch, now the back flat. Exhale, and go again. We're gonna do this for four reps. And it's really important on this one to keep that back flat. You'll see sometimes people wanna kind of round their back off and that takes a stretch away from the hamstrings. If you keep that back flat and that chest up, you're going to get a much bigger stretch for those hammies and you probably will not be able to get your legs straight. And that's really important. The angle of your back right here is what's really going to dictate how much you stretch those hamstrings and rest. I just like to make it for the record, Craig did a few extra reps. We always think is extra effort. Always <laughs> working hard. I try. You know you do. Excellent. Okay, that gives the mobility portion of what we're doing for this first segment of our workout. Now we're gonna go on and turn on the shoulders, the core, and hip stabilizers real quick with the pillar bridge. This is gonna help develop the shoulder stability and the frontal stability here. Craig's gonna pull his toes right up toward his shins. It's gonna lock his legs. It's gonna lock in his belly button right up into his spine. And then he's gonna push his shoulders away. And we're gonna do this for time. Go ahead and that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, Craig, and rest. Good. So let's go ahead, get your clock. We're gonna count this down. We have 20 seconds of holding this. If you wanna make this tougher, just look over, hit pause, hold it as long as you can, and then go ahead and click off pause. We'll finish up and we'll go to the next exercise. If this is too long, hit pause halfway through it, rest for a second. Come back up, take the pause off so you can finish this set. You are in control. And again, Craig wishes he was, but <laughs> here we go. I was. Okay, lock in your core, belly buttons up, 20 seconds. Ready, go. Good. Nice, skinny up through here, belly buttons drawn in. His legs are straight. Notice he's doing a great job of getting those shoulders flat. Those shoulders aren't winging up, but really pushing the chest to create as much space as he can right through here. Good, keep holding that now. I know you're getting tired. Two, 
one and time. Where'd you focus on there, Craig? I really thought about keeping my neck and sternum pushed away from my elbows. A lot of times you'll see people kind of collapsing through here. But if you think about pushing your neck away from your elbows, it'll just flatten your upper back out. And I'd like to also point out how Craig did a nice job of keeping his head right in line with the spine. The head in line with the spine. Okay, now we're gonna roll over onto the side. And Craig's now gonna work on the lateral aspect. He's gonna make sure that he raises the hips so it creates a straight line from the middle of his body, right from nose to the middle of his ankles right here. Craig, let's go ahead and show him what that looks like. Tummy's tight, belly button's gonna be drawn in, shoulder blade will be pulled back, and this leg is gonna be straight. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can also take the top leg and just drop it behind this foot and then do the same thing if you need to, all right? Craig, let's go ahead and do this for work. Okay. This side will be a little bit tougher than going on the front. So we're only gonna do this for about 15 seconds. Again, if you wanna do more, hit pause. Keep it up and then drop that pause button off when you finish. You ready? Mm -hmm. I yep. have your pause button. I'm ready so to go. go for 15. I'm ready to go. All right, here we go. And up. Good. Lock in the core. Really think about pushing long right out of the shoulder blade so you're feeling real tall and opened up through this section. Belly button's drawn in and notice a nice space that Craig keeps away. You can do it. Two, one, and time. Piece, oh. of, piece of cake. You are a stallion. All right, let's go the other way. Okay, hey. you may have an element that is stronger on your right side than your left, especially if you play tennis or you throw or a lot of things you do just one-sided. The other side may be a little tougher. That's the case, hit pause, we'll come back. You ready? Mm -hmm. The power of video on demand. All right, and up. Okay, tummy's tight, here we go. I wanna really Second. make sure I'm keeping my hips pushed forward. I don't wanna stick them out and break that line in my body. I wanna keep those hips right in the straight line. You know what, Craig took us through that whole set. Rest. That was impressive. It goes faster when you talk. <laughs> so long as you hold perfect technique, I'm fine with that. That concludes this section of our regeneration workout. We're now gonna go in and just try to take great care of our muscle and massage it out with a little bit of foam roll. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. Craig, with this foam roll routine, we're gonna dial this more in to what you need. Okay. All right? If, uh, if you want this in its entirety, go back to the Super 7 Regeneration Foam Roll. This workout right now is on you. Okay. So what are the areas you wanna focus on? Um, I'm really thinking uh, lower body, and a little bit in my low back. That's kinda where you're feeling back today? A little bit, yeah. Okay, well let's go ahead and go through that. Again, the foam is gonna add that compression. It's gonna help work out the knots in Craig's muscles. Craig can go through with both legs on this and just rolling back and forth to massage out his hamstrings. A little bit sore. A little bit sore. This is gonna help get blood flow into the muscle and out of the muscle. It's gonna help elongate that at the same time, but this is your own self-massage. This little foam roll is gonna be your massage therapist. It does feel good in a way though, yeah? Oh yeah, it does. It, uh... You know, it's definitely, when, it, when it's uncomfortable, it's just your body telling you you need to spend a little extra time on those spots. So you mean you actually have to listen to your body? You do. You mean you have to just listen to your body? It's, it's amazing, uh, it's amazing the, the, the gains you'll get when you actually start paying attention to it. You guys, that's a really important concept overall. That's why we take regeneration days, we use foam rolls don't think that it's crazy. You probably spend more time worrying about your car, changing oil, the tires are okay, washing it, waxing it sometimes, and you do listening to your own body. The sooner you get your mind in your muscle and in your body, the better the gains that you're gonna have and start to make this more of a lifestyle process. This isn't getting in shape for some event, this is getting in shape for life. It's about your body functioning better, giving you more and more things that you enjoy. Craig, you have swapped right into that IT band yeah, I keep the things moving a little bit. Okay, so we went hamstring, then Craig got into some of the glutes. Now he's stacking the legs. This is really macho, like unbelievably macho. If you're more like me, you put that top leg up here, and you go from the top of your knee right up to your hip. This top leg is actually what is used to take some weight off that bottom leg. If you're feeling really good, then we'll do that. Good. This one's gonna be a little bit painful, but the better you do this, the better that tissue's gonna feel. Craig, let's go ahead and focus right up on that little part right there. Okay. Good. Now the little muscle we're working for that hip stability, that piriformis glute medius a little bit, 
Greg's gonna go through and just work. It's right on top of your hip joint, but right below your belt line, and we're just gonna massage back and forth on that. This is another one that you sometimes like to just sit and just hold. Yeah, if I, you find that trigger point and you get a good angle on it, you just wanna put some compression there, like you're getting a massage, and it, it'll, it'll release. That's a good point. That's our goal. We wanna take these muscles that are real bound down and tight, I just want to work them out, like Craig said, kneading the dough so that we can get this muscle to lengthen back out. It helps improve your posture and your body's function. Definitely optimizes recovery. Good. Where do you want to go to next? Um, I, don't, I think maybe uh, back to my quad, down in the lateral quad, right between that IT band and my quad usually gets really sore and tight. So that's this area right here, but just on the down leg. So just outside the side of your leg, not quite on the top of it, but right in between. And there is no wrong place to roll on this, so I want you to find your spots and go to it. You want to spend a little bit more time on one area? Hit pause. Use the video on demand. I think it's a different technology we have to get used to using, but once you get it, it'll change the way that you view exercise. Go ahead, Craig. That quad definitely gets tight, and it's important to get you know, down on that lateral angle here and then roll right down the middle and then in a second show you how to get down into the inside of it as well. Craig, I think you're not the only person that's feeling some of these uh, knots in your legs. I feel a few screams coming out of the camera. <laughs> Good. Right through there. Now it's important to walk right from the top of your knee all the way up to the top of your hip. And then if you find a little knot in there, a little speed bump, take some time just working that part of the dough out, part of your muscle out. Now Craig's going to go through and just work a little bit more on this little teardrop right on the inside part of the knee, that vastus medialis, and that's gonna really be something that gets tender. Every step you take, walking up or walking downstairs, definitely playing in sport if you like to run or you have running activity in your sport, it really gets tender. Feeling that in there, Craig? Oh yeah. Good. Again, you'll find a spot that's just wants, just wants you to put some pressure on it and hold it and let it release. It's like having your own massage therapist every day. And not to take the place of one, but it's what you'll find is if you get regular massages and do foam roll regularly, when you do get on the table with a therapist, it'll be a lot easier for them to get in and work on you. And that's a great point. Your job is to help maintain and improve the overall system. That will allow the massage therapist, if you ever have the opportunity and the good fortune to do that, to actually go in and work on the little parts that you couldn't get to release it maximizes your return on investment, both for your overall body and then when you actually get to spend time with someone like that. Good, now Craig's working right up into that inside part of his thigh, right up into his pelvis, right down to the inside part, and you're growing. And that growing a lot of times gets tight, especially if these muscles on the outside aren't stabilizing. We wanna make sure that we can get that nice and lengthened. Our goal is to get this hip cuff all opened up. And some of these actually turn out to be a pretty good stretch while you roll through it, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Good. Now, let's go ahead and what do you want to focus on next? Uh, maybe up on my, uh, catch my other leg up. Okay. Run okay, Craig goes one. right away to a stack. I mean, he's taking that top leg and stacking it over this leg, which increases the pressure. I'm going from two, stacking goes into one, so you have more weight and he has less surface area. Gets a little deeper pressure in there, yeah? Yeah. Good. If you feel like you're massaging your bones, <laughs> that means you probably have fairly deep tissue there. Great job, Greg. Good. That's where you feeling that right in there? Yeah, definitely down. You know, again, just like you're getting a massage right through that adductor. The other part, some of these turn into a really good stretch as well, don't they? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can, I can drop my hips down a little bit lower to the ground as I get out to my knee and I feel, definitely feel stretched that adductor. And that's a really important concept is you have that stretch going on at the same time you massage, it actually can give you nice long-term fast release along those muscles and really help change the whole structure of your body. It's a very powerful tool. So it's not just a short-term feel-good effect, but a long-term tool. All right, moving into the glutes. We use them a lot. We're always talking about how you activate the glutes. And a lot of times when you start getting to use your glutes, and a lot of our athletes will ultimately come in mm -hmm. and they haven't been using them. And as soon as they start engaging their mind and their muscle using their glutes, they're really sore. Yep. And so one of the things we have to do is help your body recover, get in there and get those glutes recovered so that we can use them more. The better we do that, the more we can decrease low back pain, more we can decrease your hamstring pain. 
except right now you may be going through a little bit of pain. And again, all that pain means is that the muscle's a little bit dysfunctional, and dysfunctional muscles don't contract well, and they don't behave properly, and they lend themselves well to uh, injuries throughout your body. Dysfunctional means they just need a little more love. Is that what you would say, Craig? Yeah, we're giving a little tough love we're right now. We're giving a little tough love. You gotta have both, but uh, that's what we're getting right here. Okay, Craig, if there's that one variation where we can actually stack one leg over the other, if this right here can actually get in and get a little bit different place in your glute, do you feel that, Craig? Yeah, definitely. A little bit more through my hip rotators, my piriformis. And it's one of those muscles that gets overworked uh, because your glutes aren't functioning well. It's really important to get this thing worked back out. This is one of those things, if you do have it in and around, whether it be the family room or whether you have it around the couch, whether it's your time or it's family time, somebody may make fun of you the first time you use it, but after a while, you guys are gonna have some family disputes, or you're gonna have some disputes by your friend going down, grabbing the foam roll and starting off on it. It's a really, really neat thing to do, and you can still hold on your conversations, do whatever else you like to do. A lot of our viewers might have had a problem in the past called sciatica also, where the sciatic nerve that turns down the back of your leg gets inflamed and can have like a real sharp burning pain. And this piriformis is actually, can get really tight and compress that nerve and manifest with symptoms like that. So if you ever have kind of shooting pain down your leg, try rolling around on the piriformis and see if that doesn't make it feel a little better. Definitely something that will improve the quality of your life for sure. Just also improve the quality of our vocabulary, manifest three syllable words. That's big for us at sports school. That's my limit. We're gonna stay there for the more advanced workouts coming up in the next few, uh, few weeks, but uh, Craig's bringing them to you right now. Okay, Craig right now is gonna support his head He's put that foam roll right into his low back. He's supporting his weight with his legs, activating his glutes, keeping his core drawn in, massaging those muscles that run all the way up and down your back and go from your back out to your shoulders. One great technique is just to take these elbows and squeeze them right in around your face. Go ahead and slide those in, Craig. This will slide your shoulder blades out and allow you to massage the muscles, get so sore right in between your shoulder blades, whether you're typing all day or carrying things around, you really can get in there and really dig deep when you do that. What else are you gonna work on? I think I'm good. Excellent. That's a nice little foam roll routine. If you wanna go back and look at a more complete version of that, we can get right into the upper arms, the chest, a little bit different areas down your shins. It's a lot of great things to do. Just experiment with it or go back to that Super 7 regeneration. And that really concludes this segment of the workout, but it's not over. What I need you to get either before the workouts or after the workouts on these recovery days is a real light cardio or what we call ESD or energy system development. Feel pretty good? I do and another another great thing to do would be uh, search out some of the restorative yoga on the uh, sports school menu as well. Great point. And yoga and restorative yoga and a lot of other forms won't beat your body up. Definitely give you a lot of elongation. It's even something you can look to substitute for this entire workout. It's really powerful and that's why we have the entire sports school team to help you achieve your goals. We'll see you next time at Sports School.